The Greek philosopher Plato once said, Music gives a soul to the universe, wings to the mind, flight to the imagination, and life to everything. If you've ever sat down and put on a brilliant album, you'll know what he meant. You can let your mind drift and escape some of the trials and tribulations you're facing in your everyday life while you just listen. If you play an instrument, you'll know you can get lost in that too. And if you write your own music, you can open up a whole new world. Fast am I, and welcome to tonight's Island Life with me, Siobhan Fletcher. For the next half an hour, I'll be opening a window into Cody at Zori's world and letting you peek inside. Last year, Cody tragically died suddenly, aged just 17. Now, I didn't know him personally, so I asked those who knew him best, his family, to describe him for you. I'm Hebe and I'm Cody's sister. Hi, I'm Liz. Uh, at Zori, I'm Cody's mum. I'm Paolo, I'm Cody's dad. I'm Giacomo, Cody's brother. I'm Teo, and I'm Cody's brother. Where do you even begin with him? He was, he was so, so funny. Me and him used to, like, joke all the time and, like, have so much fun together. Like, he was just the funniest person. He could just make a joke out of anything, really. He was just so funny. I'd say, like, everyone around him would say, like, he's a really caring person because he's always there for you. Like, super nice you know, had no bad bone in his body kind of thing. Like he was just always up helping anyone or listening to anyone or just providing as much kind of support as you could, especially as a brother. Like it's all you could ever ask for really is someone like that in your life. Well, I would say he was very kind and funny and really creative and smart. Like you could just come up with a song like on the spot. If you liked his song, you could say, can you play that on the piano? And you'd play him the song on your phone. And he could just, you know, listen to it for a bit and then play it on the piano. Just really, like, funny and kind would be the first two things. He also really smart. He'd always have new things he learned from the day and he'd want to tell you all about if, what he's learned. So just a really funny, smart, kind person. <laughs> That's what I would have said too. He never wanted to do small talk. He always wanted to get right to the heart of things, find out what made you tick. He was very loving. There wasn't a day that he didn't hug us and kiss us and tell us he loved us. And he also... He liked all sort of uh, meditation and spiritual things and he was very into sort of all that kind of meaning of life type uh, type things really so yeah super creative i mean he was always making up poems and always writing down philosophy and making up board games <laughs> he just had such a huge passion for music as well that's another thing like he we have a like a piano in our house and he just used to play it like all the time and like he just would just play like, different chords and rhythms and just like experiment all day on the piano and just like come up with new ideas like he was just so creative he'd just come up with things that you would never even think of especially me because i'm more like i'm more into my art as opposed to music so when i'd hear like he'd normally say oh come on i've got a new song to show you and then i'd listen to it and i'd be like oh like you know, I don't know where he'd come up with like some of the creative stuff he did with the piano. It was just like amazing. So my, my memories is just sort of hearing him around the house, like playing his piano and him even making like his own music for his SoundCloud on his computer. Like my mum loves Prince and he did like a, a remix of Prince with his own spin on it for her. And he would always sort of do like mashups with like Mario or like Nintendo music, he was kind of inspired by like video games and just making fit, not like your typical kind of dance music or he always tried to make it his own. When Cody died, he left behind an extensive back catalogue of music, mostly recorded roughly into his phone or laptop. Putting out a collection of his work became a family mission but it was an idea Cody's brother Teo tells me that came from Cody himself. It was inspired from him, really, the album, because I remember, obviously, like, I have his Instagram now, so, like, I, I sometimes look on his Instagram, because you get, like, memories on his stories, and he posted, like, his story, which was album coming soon, because he'd done all these recordings. I remember looking at that, and I go, oh, this is something that he really, really would have wanted his work to be out there for anyone to listen to. And when I mentioned this to my family, like, oh, I've seen this story, like, and this is something that we should really do, because it's something that he obviously really wanted. He put it out there in the universe, like originally, so that's kind of what inspired it really. So I'm sure he would have absolutely loved it, his work out there and it being all produced in this way. And and the fact that now like it's always gonna be that anyone can look back and listen to it. I'm sure he'd be so thrilled about it.
it's just in a way we're, we're so lucky that he did kind of do these recordings because obviously if he got into a bit of a habit where just he would record himself which i'm sure like a lot of singers do because they want to listen to themselves back and then get better and such but we're just so kind of lucky that he did record all his work so that way we can always look back and enjoy it you know that's that's another thing that i do kind of appreciate that he did take the time to record all this stuff because you know without it it's like we wouldn't have any anything to kind of look back at his piano or his singing you know on the 15th of july this year on what would have been cody's 19th birthday his family released an album of his music all of the music you've heard so far during this report is taken from that album which is called Wispicity. Cody's mum, Liz, told me where they got the title from. Well, Cody, he always liked to mix words up, you know. He was always making up his own new words. And Wispicity was the mixture of wisps and electricity because he felt like he could kind of hear the electrical energy in the air and it was like a wisp, like a whisper. I mean, that was the first music that he ever composed by himself, Wispicity. That was his, probably the most worked on song. You know, he had a poem that goes with it. So yeah, it was very, yeah, it was very special to him, that piece of music, Wispicity. And and like I say, the, the joining of the two words, he made that up. And that's why we decided to call the album that, because it was, it's like, I think for Cody, it was probably one of his favourite pieces. He played it all the time and was always trying, he had different versions of it, slower and faster. Putting together an album of just a few songs from Cody's hundreds of recordings was no mean feat. I went down to the island's premier recording studio in Balasala to find out how it was done. My name's Chip again, and I run Ballagroove Recording Studio in the south of the Isle of Man. I suppose, just to say about the end product, Liz, Cody's mum, had stated that she didn't want too much doing to the recordings. She wanted them just kind of raw as they were presented, rather than going through. And we tidied them up, so we tidied up like the start and ends of songs and just got them all to the same level. So like a, what's called a mastering job. But we didn't go through and polish everything and make it perfect because she wanted it presented authentically as Cody had recorded. The big technical job was going through the sort of mountain of material because he'd recorded onto his phone, just using his phone microphone, playing piano and singing and playing piano. He'd also recorded onto his computer and he'd also recorded in Logic, in like music software, more sort of electronic pieces. So there was in the region of 200 files and they weren't named, so they'd just have like, they'd just be named with the date or maybe one word that gave a clue as to what song it was. So it was a matter of going through, listing them all, and then working out which song was which, because there's a lot of duplicates. You know, some songs there might be 10 versions of or three versions of. So I had to kind of get to know the tunes well enough to identify which song was which from the lyrics, but an awful lot of them, probably 50% of them or more are instrumental. So I just had to make notes about something that would trigger me to know that it was the same song if it came up again. And then, yeah, collating all that together and then finding, if there was like four versions of a song, finding what was kind of objectively the best version, like the best recording, um, or one that, you know, didn't have any too much noise in the background. But the way Cody had worked, it seemed to me like he was incredibly creative and he was just coming up with stuff constantly. So he'd come up with an idea, record it, maybe refine it a few times and then just move on to the next song. So we wanted to kind of capture that spontaneity that's there in the recordings and, you know, that he kind of just hits record, starts playing and then hits stop before the piano's even faded because obviously psychologically he was just ready to move on to the next thing. So it's quite a difficult task, technically.
I'm a big music fan. I'm one of these people who collects vinyls and loves listening to an album from start to finish, as I imagine you probably do. I know a lot of thought goes into a track listing and things like this. Now, I know obviously this album's a little bit different because it is, you know, you didn't have him in the studio with you working out the track listing, that sort of thing. But do you think that if you do listen to it all the way through, as anyone who's produced an album would intend, that that does give that sort of window into into Cody and, and his music? Yeah, I think, I mean, obviously I didn't get the chance to work with him as a producer. You know, a producer's role is to to talk to the artist about that sort of thing, about, you know, how the music will be presented and the track order and what story it tells through the course of an album for those of us like you say that enjoy listening to a whole album and not just single tracks my impression is that Liz and his family they've put some thought into the running order of the of the tracks and I think yeah I think it should be listened to as a whole I think if you if you just listen to one track you don't you'd only get one perspective on him you know by listening to all of them and the album is still only a snapshot of all the material that he produced so I think, yeah, listen, ideally listen to it all, give it some time and try and understand what it was like being Cody, because I think that's what's being presented. It's an insight into somebody's life. As the album itself was ultimately Cody's own idea, I asked his family what they think he would have thought of the end product. I think he'd be happy with it. It's a lot of his songs that he, I think he put the most kind of work into. So the ones that he, he thought were some of his best work. So I think he's quite glad. And he, he always wanted to get his music out there to more and more people. So I think he'd be happy with it. He probably, he probably want more on it. To be fair, he probably thought the songs that we chose. He probably would have said, oh, you could have put an extra couple on there, you know. But I don't think he would be happy overall. Yeah, I mean. We're hoping that we will release more of his music, perhaps not on Bandcamp, but on Spotify in the future. We just wanted to release it with Bandcamp because we knew we could do that on his birthday, and uh, that's why we chose that app, and it was very important to us to release it on his birthday for him because last year when he was going to be 18, that's what we would have hoped we could have given him as a present, was a couple of days with in the studio to do the album, but, you know, that didn't happen, so... So having it out as a body of work, it, it's a nice way to market, I think. And it's raising money for a charity as well. So why did you pick that particular charity? Well, after we lost Cody, a friend of mine who'd also lost a daughter told me about the Compassionate Friends. I needed a sort of safe place that I could talk to people who understood what we were going through. And I'd never heard of them before she mentioned them. I got in touch with them and they let me be part of a private Facebook group and it's really supportive all the parents in that group we share our stories and pictures and it's been you know just a good way to not feel so alone and then Paolo and I went to a bereaved parents retreat which I'd never (laughs) knew knew those sort of things existed Mm -hmm. and uh, it's run by all the facilitators who are also bereaved parents and some of them are further along in their grief and some of them like ourselves were very new And just meeting these people and seeing their journeys and talking just made us feel like we weren't so alone and just free to talk about him. And it's all run by volunteers, so if you don't contribute, then it won't continue. And they do so many good things. Like I say, they have a helpline, they have the retreats, they do walks, they do local meetings. Not one on the island, but maybe in the future and that's why we wanted to support them. Some parents do like, uh, you know, because their kids were into sports, they do all like sort of uh, runs or like marathons and uh, they do like, uh, you know, like cycling, you know, lots of sports events, but Cody was more into the music, so it was more like uh, something they could do to raise money was his music, really was the most uh, appropriate thing to do for us, really. So we did raise a little bit of money, so which was nice. I think the reason why the charity work is so important is because Cody was always keen to help other people that's all he ever wanted to really do especially in the the last kind of year he was with us he was always spoke about helping all these people around you know just trying to and so if if giving money to charity and helping other people I think it's something he'd really want because he that's all he ever wanted to do for a, a good long while he just saw the good in everybody do you know what I mean he just wanted to bring that out all the time he just wanted people to feel as 
the, the best they can do. Clearly, Cody suffered with mood swings and depression and he wanted to help himself, obviously, but also others. You know, he was a very good listener. He gave great advice and he was so, you know, never was judgmental. So, yeah, he'd, he'd love the charity like Giacomo. He just wanted to help people. <laughs> Cody's album is available on Bandcamp, where it can be purchased for just £7. All of the proceeds are being donated to Compassionate Friends, a charity based in the UK which works with bereaved parents and siblings. My name is Stephen Armstrong and I'm the head of fundraising. The Compassionate Friends started in 1969 when two sets of parents in a hospital in Coventry actually were brought together by the then hospital chaplain. And they realised that the power of bereaved parents supporting other bereaved parents, where they both felt that they knew what each other was feeling and there was no stigma around saying their children's name or talking about how they felt about their child and all the rest of it. So it came about in the late 60s like that. And then it's grown then since today. We've got over 250 volunteers, all of them bereaved parents who then support other bereaved parents through a range of peer support services. So we have a national helpline throughout the UK, which is open every day of the year, which is staffed by bereaved parents. And parents can call whenever they, they want to, whether they might be fairly newly bereaved or they might have even been bereaved for 10, 20, 30 years, but for some reason or another, they want to speak to a bereaved parent that day. It might be the anniversary of their child's birthday or the anniversary of their death, for example. So that helpline is open every day of the year. And then around the country as well, there are local support groups in various communities which are run by bereaved parents who meet usually on a monthly basis and are there to support parents who want to attend And then in quite a lot of communities as well, we have local contacts who are there. They may not necessarily run a support group, but they're there in that community to act as an initial contact for the Compassionate Friends as a bereaved parent and might be able to offer initial one-to-one contact with other bereaved parents. When you each listened to the album, what was the sort of initial thoughts? Because obviously it sounds really like It's really polished and it's been produced really well by JIT, but it still sounds like, you know, you could just be listening to him play it in his bedroom. I think it's really nice for me personally because when I listen to his album, it just feels like a really good moment to kind of think about him and just remember all the the time. So I like it as a... Because it used to be quite difficult having all these different recordings on everywhere and I just couldn't find myself listening to it because I couldn't find it. So now it's all in one place, I just like, when I'm walking to work or doing whatever I do, I'll just listen to it and it's just a good moment for me to just think back and remember him. Yeah. Yeah, the same. We all, I mean, that was the most important part really for us as a family was to put his music together so we could all listen to it and share it and, you know, share it in the future for any new members of the family that, you know, we might get. And um, just being able to, to listen to him, you know, we had different things on different like I said, dead devices and, and you can't always access them and you think, oh, I wish I could just hear that now. And so now we can, you know. It's like uh, every day the house is filled with his playing, you know, so it's ever so quiet now and so it's just great to, just to put it on and kind of feel his presence again. I like it. I like so some of them is like, because he used to like to do podcasts like you do, you know, so it's one of his things that so used to make me do it, you know, say, Dad, Dad, come on, let's do a podcast. So used to interview me and stuff, you know, so we got all that recorded, which is quite nice, you know, to listen to that. So you say, what's your favorite music and what do you like? So I kind of, a, first thing in the morning, just wake me up sometimes and just do a podcast for him. So it's nice to kind of have that, you know, all the, not just the music, just his voice and this sort of conversation we had, you know. If you were going to tell anyone why they should listen to this album, what would you say? I'd say it's quite a, it's quite it's quite relaxing as an album in as a whole. If you like just listening to music around the house, or like if you prefer like going for like walks in like moody weather, I think it's quite good for that. <laughs> well, because Cody's self-taught and everything that he's done on it is 
is totally himself. I mean, Jip has put it into a, a format that we could share it, but none of it's been changed at all. It was all what Cody had recorded of himself. And it's quite inspiring in that way that someone so young could create something so special, you know? And, um, and he put his heart and soul into it. So it's definitely worth listening to. I asked Cody's family what their favourite songs on the album were. A common answer was track six. So there's a few, like, obviously, Viking I like because it's really nicely played. So my favourite piano would probably be Viking Ship, but I like them all, to be honest. It's yeah. hard to choose. Yeah, <laughs> Yeah, same. I like them all, too, but it's hard to choose. Yeah. I think there's one called Cylinders that I, I really like, um, also Viking Ship. My favourite one on the album is Viking Ship. I just think it's really beautiful. So now, please enjoy in its entirety Viking Ship by Cody Atzori. You've been listening to Wispicity on Manx Radio. You can hear the podcast anytime online at manxradio.com.